baby stripe. Can't take it out on dates. That's what he really hates. But when they wait and see all of the Ferrari, and when the tires, all of the heads will turn. Oh, how do you think that's over? If this test doesn't work, we'll be broke. We'll know soon. You'll see what the robot sees on this monitor. Activating visual sensors. Good morning, Dr. Brown. Rough night. Ah, that's better. Wow, better. Wow, Mr. Vance BMW. I must be doing well. Good morning, Katie. Do you see the car we're driving? Drive carefully, Katie. Is that your driver? You're using Mark's little sister to drive the car? It was my daughter Holly's idea. Huh? Holly really seems to like Mark. Is it uh, getting serious? I like him a lot too, Art. I think he has a lot of potential. It's him a lot too, Art. I think he has a lot of potential. I'd say that sounds pretty serious. All right, Katie. You know what to do? Mm-hmm. Start the engine. This is incredible, Trevor. Down. Kate makes driving the car look like child's play. Yeah, she's great. And it does make a very impressive demonstration. Still worried about us going broke, aren't The new stock's ready to sell, isn't it? Not right. No, that's the problem. Justin Maddox says it isn't ready yet. Music, anyone? <laughs> All right, that'll ruin our whole plan, won't it? How could you let this happen? It's your job to take care of all the finances. I trusted you on this. Relax. Right, Rain. Justin gave me an alternative that'll still do everything we want. Katie, ask the boss how we're doing. <laughs> You're both doing great. Next stop, the Indy 500. <laughs> okay, so what is this great alternative? Next exit. Justin wants authorization now to sell 100,000 shares of your personal stock. He says he won't sell it until after next Friday's press conference. Katie, you can bring the car back in there. Okay. Stop. Go back where you came. Yeah, I can see how that would fit our plan. Uh-huh. It's perfect. Oh, ladies, please direct your attention to the left and check it out. Oh, you mean that red car? Hold on for a short detour. Mark, you know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know for a fact that you see one of those things at least once a week in the Ferrari showroom. They plastic all over your wallet at home. <laughs> I know, but it's not the same as seeing one roll down the street. Every time you come around, I feel my life turn upside down. What you do? I'm into beamers. Beamers? Dad's BMW. <laughs> no, 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 it just can't be. In your wildest streets, did you ever think it come to this? Things are never as they seem, so be careful what you do. They all want <laughs> prosperity, but I prefer simplicity. No, I don't need it now. Then you came and tempted me, is it to be or not to Aren't be? 
too tired of following that Ferrari yet. Uh, just a few more minutes. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think it come to thee? I don't think he wants you following him. Things are never as they seem. So be careful what you do. Oh, it's kind of a strange place for a Ferrari. Yeah. Maybe he's lost. Well, if he isn't, he's gonna be. Uh, I think this would be a good place to give up the chase, eh, Mr. Bond? So what? I mean, he just vaporized. How could he just pull away from my car like that? Your car? <laughs> Your car? Right. This is my car, and I think the plan was to uh, go eat. Not to go Ferrari hunting? No, don't don't say anything else. By all means, eating before dreams. But you wait. I'd be glad to. All by lunch. This is a little dramatic, I think. No, I don't think so. Not in light of what you're asking me to do. Okay, that's fine. I just... just want to make sure we're not acting out some old black and white... movie fantasy or something. I don't think you realize what I have at stake here. I mean, I have everything at stake. I've worked at Banks Electronics for over 20 years. And you're overdue for a nice big bonus, are you? Sure, sure I am. But I read in the paper every day about people who go to jail for doing this kind of thing. No. No, you see, you read about stupid people going to jail for doing the same thing in a stupid way. And you're different. Yeah. Yeah, I'm different. What did you think? You think I've never done this before? Have you ever seen my name in the paper? Huh? Huh? All right. All right. That's it. You need to relax, Art. It's in the bag, baby. The key is timing. And what if somebody else buys all this stock? You've had me convince banks to release early. Who? It hasn't gone up in value for the last six months. Only someone with inside information would be stupid enough to buy bank stock right now. Here's what we do after the stock is issued. For the next few days, with the help of some friends. Some good friends. We bite up a little bit of time. And by the time you make the announcement next Friday, we'll have all the stock we need. Well, that looks suspicious. Sure it will. You tell me where they're going to start looking. None of the people that buy the stock live within a thousand miles of each other. It'd be like a dog chasing a bird. What's important for you and I to remember is that we don't try to do everything in a hurry. So you don't mix greed with speed. That's exactly what's kept me out of trouble. I guess I just needed a little reassurance. Sure you did. <laughs> now, as much as I'm enjoying our little chat in these, these elegant surroundings, I have things to do. Has Banks signed the authorization to issue the stock? Yes. You send their authorization over to me by run of this afternoon. Make sure the bag's locked, okay? You can't trust anybody these days. You should take your wife for a little drive this weekend. Start looking at some nice big houses.
didn't you ever get tired of eating here? Absolutely not. People who are making a mark in the world are eating here, Holly. No pun intended. Achievement begets achievement. If you want to be a success, rub shoulders with people who have been successful. Um, speaking of success, you should see the house he lives in. I've seen it. Only four years ahead of us in school, and already he's making over 200 grand a year. And at whose expense? Why are you always so hard on the poor guy? Because Justin Maddox is a snake. He's always been nice to me. Well, he's nice to everyone who doesn't have their backs turned to him. Let's talk about somebody really successful like um, Jonathan Dickinson. Who? The first president of Princeton University. Uh-huh. Now we move the conversation in your direction. I like Princeton. Well, I know you do. You and my dad. Any day now, right? A new Princeton application? Yeah, any day now. Dear Mr. Andrews, thank you for your interest in Princeton. We regret to inform you, Princeton only considers freshmen with 4.0 grade point averages or better. And what makes you think they go just by grade point? Well, hey, don't get me wrong. I'd love to go to Princeton. Marky, add up these numbers, would ya? All right. All right. See, this is what our lunch cost, which was $12.45. This is how much money you gave him. $20. That's right. And this is how much change we got back. Seven fifty-five. Jackpot. What? He gave me that ten dollars and sixty-five cents. Hmm. Let me see the change. I can see it already. Hmm. I'll be right back. Come on. Because you didn't steal. You did the right thing. You did, you mean. No, we did it together. But he made the mistake. That's right. He made the mistake, not you. But it doesn't matter who makes the mistake. It doesn't matter if it's a dime or a dollar or a million dollars. The main thing to remember is it's never right to benefit from someone else's mistake. You gave the money back, and I'm very proud of you. Thanks. I think. How are you, Mark? I'm doing fine, Justin. Thanks. How are you? I'm fine. Hi, Holly. Hi, Justin. You know Barbara Wood, don't you, Mark? She works in our office. Yeah, sure, I, I do. I've, I've seen you. I, I mean, noticed you, I mean. I mean, when I've run stuff over to your office. It's nice to see you again, Mark. So you're Princeton Tiger yet? Ah, uh, no, uh, not yet. Well, that's no big loss if you don't make it. College is four years of spending instead of four years of making, I always say. Well, we'll see you around. Yeah, okay. I'll see you later. Speaking of success. Yeah, she looked very successful. So how much did Williams tell you? Enough to put his tail in a knot. Ooh, that must have been quite a bit. Yeah, actually a lot more than I expected now that you mention it. Is he nervous? Yeah, he's very nervous. Good afternoon, Banks Electronics. Oh, hi, Mr. Polson. Dad's expecting your call. Just a minute. Hi, Dad. Mr. Polson's on line six. Uh-huh. Bye. Oh, running a little behind today, aren't we, Andrews? Late lunch with a cute girl. Two of them. I took the short one home, but no one was there to watch her. Good. I've been needing somebody to help me push the buttons that light up. Oh, Art uh, Williams has been down here looking for you every two minutes. OK, I'll go see him. And Dad wants you to see him before you make a run. OK. Do you know the sun? <laughs> what do you think? Down, down in, in the jungle where nobody goes, there's a wishy-washy girlfriend washing her clothes. She goes, ooh, ah, ooh. Uh, that's how the wishy-washy girlfriend 
washes her clothes. Ah! Hello again, Holly. You're looking very good today. I need to tell you that at the restaurant. Hi, Justin. What can I do for you? Well, you're supposed to say thank you, Justin. You look very well yourself. Excuse me. Hit it. Good afternoon, Banks Electronics. Yeah, thank you. I'll transfer your call out to the factory. I'm sorry, you were saying? You were just telling me how good I look today. When are you going break? I've already had it. Well, that's too bad. I was going to offer you a spin in my new wheels. Look, Katie, another red car. Cute. She's into Beamers. It's your loss. Everywhere, Mr. Williams. I'm sorry. Are you making another run right now? Uh, just a minute. I'm supposed to see Mr. Banks first. All right. Take this over to Maddox and Son. It absolutely has to be there before the end of the day. Okay. Right. Um, do you want it locked? Yes, I did. Here, get it. That's okay. Give me the key. Well, so is this just a social visit, or did you need to see someone? No, I've already seen the person I wanted to see. I guess while I'm here, I'll rattle Arts Jane a bit. Just a moment, please. No, no, that's okay. I'll walk back. I'll see you later. Bye. It isn't the route most people are taking, but that doesn't mean it isn't better. There are a lot of college grads out there without jobs. Give it some thought. Okay. Hey, thanks very much, Mr. Max. I really appreciate it. Yep. Okay, I've got to go. All right, bye. Did you see Art? Yeah. Dad? Yep. What do you want? I'll tell you about it tonight. Oh, um, I can't come tonight. Something came up. Oh, okay. What? Just some personal things. You know, stuff. Okay. Well, I will be back after this run, so I'll give you a call later. Right. Come on, Katie. Bye. Bye. Mama Mia, two in one day. Must be a sign. Me and Holly are impressed, you know. Boy, do I know.
did my dad want to see you for today? Finally got yourself fired, huh, kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just the opposite, in fact. He gave you a raise? Well, sort of. He uh, offered me a different kind of job, an executive training position. Mark, that's fantastic. Yeah, I thought so, too. He wants me to start right after graduation. <laughs> well, that'd be great. Earn more money than you would have before Princeton classes start. Well, actually, Dad, uh, I would work for Mr. Banks during the day and then take night classes here at the community college. He said all the classes would be paid for. It's a part of the training program. Well, then you must have told him no, then. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't know about all this. I never thought I'd be accepted. Well, now you know. Well, yeah, Dad, but I... It's a lot of money. Well, look at it this way. It's four years of spending instead of four years of making. That's the whole reason for going to Princeton in the first place. That's one reason. Probably the last. But getting a job has got to be right up there. Going to college is no guarantee of getting a job. There are a lot of college grads who don't have work. You show me one graduate of the Woodrow Wilson School of International and Public Affairs at Princeton that doesn't have a job. That's a mouthful. Well, okay, there probably aren't any. But that's just one reason. There are other reasons, too. I mean, besides the money. And those are? There's Holly, for starters. Me. Me? Well, yeah. I mean, four years is a long time away. Maybe too long. Okay. I guess I see where you're coming from. No, wait. You're worried about what's going to happen to me while you're gone. What am I going to do, get married? Don't answer that. Will you just eat your cake? Absolutely. Mark, this is 10 years of planning we're talking about here. Excuse me, I think it's time to go. No, don't go. I've got a lot of homework to do still. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Mark. I guess the decision has to be yours. But you're holding in your hand a letter from Princeton University. Do you know what that means? Can I call you George? No. I know how patient you've been. Much more than you needed to be. But I'm finally coming in here with good news. I am going to take care of this tax assessment in full in two weeks. Well, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not good news. When you came into my office today, you were supposed to have a check in your hand. Yes, I know. But I thought if I took care of it in two weeks, in full, it would be much better than taking care of it piecemeal. How old are you, Mr. Maddox? 23. 23. That's impressive. Done pretty well for yourself, huh? I guess so. No, you know so. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. I have a real problem with people like you. It's not because you make a lot of money. It's because you don't think the rules apply to you. I think you think this process can go on forever. If you're not in here in one week with full payment, I'll start proceedings to seize your personal property and your assets. And we'll start with that nice red Ferrari. Relax. There's a new wrinkle I didn't want to tell you about over the phone. I need you to arrange for the announcement to be moved up to Wednesday. Wednesday? I, I can't... Don't explain the problems it causes. Just do it. So what happened with don't mix greed with speed? <laughs> for every great plan, there must also be a great alternative, Art. Well, for the few minutes we have left, Mr. Sinner has asked me to tell you a little about what I do as an investigator for the Securities and Exchange Commission. 
There's been a lot on the news lately about people going to jail for what's called insider trading. But it's not always just brokers and big time traders. That's just the network news media hype side. Anybody who uses information that has not been made public for personal gain in the financial markets is subject to investigation and prosecution for inside trading. How do you know who to investigate? Knowing who is usually the easiest part, believe it or not. And the most frustrating, because even though you're sure something funny is going on, you can't always prove anything. The ones who are good at it are very good at it. And it's hard to put your finger on them and finally make it stick. So what happens to somebody that's convicted? Large fines, prison terms, sometimes both. Well, then why would anybody do it? Greed, the euphoria of getting away with it, big things to buy, big debts to pay. And for some people, it actually becomes an addiction like gambling. Any more questions? Well, thank you, Ms. Steele. We appreciate the time. Smart lady. Okay, class, let me give you your assignment while we still got a few minutes. Now, you know I've always tried to give you real life experiences in this class, and I must say, I've done it again. As you can see, our mainframe computer's been installed thanks to Sam Spielman's dad. Now, this computer is tied directly into the New York financial markets. In fact, if I wanted to, I could make a stock purchase right now. So, your assignment is to take $25,000, yeah. imaginary dollars, okay, and invest it in the market. Now take these sheets, and these sheets will show you how to use the programs on the computers you'll be using. You guys want to do our this assignment is important. Very much. Don't use sure. the main no, these computers yes, receive all stuff the information you need to do the simulated stock purchases that you're going to be doing with this assignment. What did he say? I want you to be imaginative and creative because obviously the person that makes the most money with their stock purchases is going to get the better grade, okay? So have fun with this because you're not actually going to be making stock purchases. May I help you? Ms. Steele from the SEC to see Justin Maddox. Do you have any idea where the $500,000 from the Miller account has gone? Yes, I know where the $500,000 from the Miller account has gone. And I'm the one who's going to worry about it, okay? Would you like to come with me? I think there's something you might like to see. Look who's here. Well, well, if it isn't the lovely Miss Steele. Making her little courtesy calls and asking her little questions. Being a little snoop, you mean. Mr. Spielman, your access code has been accepted. You may proceed. What are you using that one for? Because you know how to use this one. Plus, if we hurry and use this one, we can still get lunch. Sounds good to me. What's that beeping sound for? That means we're ready. Oh, great. So, what are you going to buy? What do you think? Hmm, K-1 
can't seem to get Banks Electronics to show up. Maybe she's not listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Let me try something else. Oh, here it is. It's on Amex. You're in luck after all. Great. Jeez, the price hasn't gone up in over six months. Not gonna pull a good grade on this pick. Well, I'm not doing it for the grade, Sam. I've already got the grade. Okay, right, I get it. Well, you're in luck. You can buy Banks, Mr. Andrews, at 250, which is 8,000 shares, but you can buy on the margin and buy 100,000 shares. Oh, I knew there was a reason Banks felt good to me when I woke up this morning. Shoot the whole roll on it, my good fellow. Yes, sir. Look, wait a second, it says you need to attach your purchase to an account number. Uh, what do you mean, like to a savings gun or something? I guess. Uh, don't you have a money market something or another? Well, yeah. Can I just make a number up? No, use your own. It'd be faster. Lunchtime's wasting. Hear what he said. Doesn't matter anyway. It's all make believe. Here it is. Well, it looks like you can buy just a fraction over 99,000 shares. Making it even 100,000. Right toe. All my money for Princeton's in there, so you be careful. Now, now, you know what Mr. Sinner says. Don't invest what you can't lose. <laughs> nope, that's it, Mr. Big Bucks. Let's eat. What about yours? I'll do it later on my dad's computer. If I don't get something to eat in the next five minutes, I'm gonna pass it out. Transaction accepted. 100,000 shares purchased on the margin. Balance due. $225,000. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Transaction complete. Art right, Williams. I don't know who you think you're trying to pull here, mister. Justin? You think you can pull a fast one on me? Well, let me tell you something, pal. I've had bigger and smarter sharks try to chew me up, and they've all ended up in the soup line. Do you understand me? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the hundreds of thousands of shares of bank stock you bought less than one hour ago. I don't know what you're talking about. Justin, I haven't bought a hundred thousand shares of banks. What would I buy them with? Justin? Justin? I'll get back to you. You better not be yanking my leg over it. Let's hear the scoop on this new boyfriend. Well, first of all, you should know that every girl at school is dying to go with him. I mean, dying. He's got everything you could possibly want. He's smart, he rollerblades like crazy, he loves all my music. This is it right here. And his family is loaded. That never hurts. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah, we might actually like this one. You're gonna love him. Just give him a honk. You sure? Absolutely. Isn't he cute? This is Enzo. Hi, Enzo. How are you doing? Your hair is my favorite color. I try to imagine the morning sun without you by my side. But the gentle mist of the coming dawn seems like tears in your sweet eyes. And when rainbows appear in your night, wash away and my world without you would be black and white I imagine myself in the warm summer rain without you next to me but as I look outside through the clouded pain you're the only thing I see if the setting sun cast is light on black and white and 
my world without you would be black and white. You're not gonna kiss, are you? Where's your friend? His name's Norman. How you doing, Norm? It's Norman. Sorry. You're not gonna catch us kissing. like me. Wow. Here at the jungle gym with you, aren't I? I'm serious. Yes, I like you a lot. Okay. Do you think I'm pushy? Don't hit me. Well, then answer. Okay. I'm sorry. I guess I just, I don't understand why you're asking me these questions. I mean, what do you mean do I think you're pushy? Well, my dad always says, I know what I want and I usually get it. I think he's right there. I'm pushy then. Yeah, I guess. But in a good way. I mean, I like it. <laughs> why? Because it makes me feel good and it helps me get what I want too. What do you want? Besides you, you mean? Yeah, besides me. You want to know whether I want to go to Princeton because I want to go, or I want to go because my parents and you want me to go, right? It's that obvious, huh? You have a big P printed on your forehead. <laughs> you know, when I was about eight years old, I read this book about Albert Einstein, and he taught at Princeton. So I always wanted to go there. He was my hero, and I told my mom and dad I wanted to go, and they said, okay, we'll help you get there. It was always my idea, something I always wanted to do. Everyone else just helped me get there, including you. And what about the offer my dad made you? Well, your dad never went to college, and look where he is. Yeah, but when I told him about Princeton accepting you, he said if he were you, he would think long and hard about giving something like that up. Your dad said that? Yep. Hmm. I guess that just leaves you then. Yeah, and I don't get that part. Well, think about it. I mean, I'd go away to Princeton and you'd go somewhere else. So what'll happen? Look at me. What do you think? really boring. Yeah. Hey, you know, if I just had all the money I wanted, I wouldn't have these hard decisions to make. All right, you guys, <laughs> let's get serious. Allie's assignment is how I would spend a million dollars. Read the list. Swing set, stereo, pearl earrings, St. Bernard dog, <laughs> houseboat, mink coat. Imitation mink. Imitation mink, right, good for you. Road bike, mountain bike, new carpet, church homeless shelter, station wagon, lawnmower, record store. Can I something? Shoot. Contact lenses for Norman. Contact lenses for Norman and a bowling alley. Oh, okay, not bad. Well, pretty easy to tell we're not high rollers. Well, not all of us are used to thinking big, you know. You mean like me. Exactly. I mean, we all have to share an order of fries when we go to McDonald's for crying out loud. But, oh, sorry. What's bothering Dad? He's been on and off the phone for an hour. I don't know yet. Something from work, I think. Mm -hmm. His job, you mean? No. No, it's something else. Hmm. Okay, so what about you? Well, what about me? Well, you didn't say anything you wanted. Well, I'm saving the best for last. <laughs> As some of you may know, I've had my eye on a certain make of foreign car. So I'll admit, the first thing I'd do is buy the Ferrari. Then I'd go for a little drive. Where? New Jersey. New Jersey? Yeah, they have a little town there called Princeton, and they have a pretty good school, so I'd probably hang out there for about four years. Yeah, I'd go to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> You've been thinking, huh? Me thinking? No, of course not. So what about you, Dad? BMW motorcycle? I don't know. I, I think I'd look pretty good on a BMW. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think she's going to make it. Princeton. What are you standing out there for? I was telling my dad about our stock assignments. 
We got a problem. Holly, hi. Did, did you find out what was wrong at work today? You said your dad was upset and there was a bunch of people that... Is this Mark? Uh, oh, uh, hi, Mrs. Banks. Is Holly in? Just a moment, please. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Holly, did you ever find out what was wrong at work today? No, not a whole lot. Except her dad said trading on bank stock has been suspended. Suspended? Yeah, stopped. All right, what does that mean? Well, it means that the stock can't be bought or sold. People who want to buy it can't, and those who already have it can't sell it. It ruin the whole business. Mark? Hello? Why are you asking me all this? Uh, I just wondered. I've got to go. Mr. Banks, as an agent for the SEC, I don't like this a bit. There are too many unanswered questions. It feels like insider trading to me. Well, I see your viewpoint. And I don't blame you a bit. But I still want the suspension lifted. I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. If Mark made a mistake, and I'm not convinced that it was just a mistake, then your company is going to lose a lot of money. Well, I guess I'm not just talking about losing money. This is the kid who I want to see running this company someday. If I know Mark as well as I think I know him, I'm not going to lose any money. I've talked to Art, he agrees, and I trust Art. So, please, lift the suspension. Well, there must be something you can do, somebody you can call. Just tell him it was just all a big mistake and that all I want is my money back. Sally May. Yeah, give me any recent information you have on banks, electronics. Yeah, right. Thanks. Call me right back. Oh, Mr. Spielman, that was all the money I'd earned for college. Even some of the money my grandma gave me is in there. She gave it to me for school. I mean, I'm just a kid. I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't even be allowed to buy stocks. Well, I don't know what to do, though. I mean, there's nothing I can do. The trading on that stock has been suspended. It's flashing right there on the screen. There's nothing I can do until the suspension is lifted. Well, I guess the only thing I can do is go home and tell my folks what happened. I think I'm gonna be sick. Thanks for trying, Mr. Spielman. Sure, yeah. I'll call you if there's any change. Thanks. Right. What channel? Channel 3. A shared vision and what we could accomplish, the results of which uh, we're here today to talk about. I will simply announce then that Banks Electronics has developed the first marketable artificial intelligence. Is this happening right now? Uh, Mr. Banks, did you, would you care to comment on the uh, suspension of trading of bank stock, which occurred just as early as yesterday? Uh, the, I knew that this question would come up. And all I can tell you is, first of all, that that suspension in trading uh, is being lifted as we speak. And oh, beyond that, dead we look. have to wait uh, for a statement that we will give to the press uh, as soon as possible. Go catch Mark. You can follow me back to uh, another part of the lab. I'll show you Do my eyes believe the what they see? Uh, for example, the uh, footage that you're seeing on the uh, TV screen in front of you is from the viewpoint of a robot that is driving an automobile, and this this uh, automobile is being driven by a robot that's being commanded by a seven-year-old child. What's happening? People are bidding on banks' electronics so fast the price doesn't even have a chance to settle. So what does that mean? I mean, for me. It means you can send yourself and your entire senior class to Princeton if that's what you want. Yeah, Still want your $25,000 back? Eight seventy five. dollars 125000 One million dollars? Infinitely variable. The announcement of this breakthrough is going to uh, aid us international recognition. Art Williams. Justin, you can forget the panic. 
Mark Andrews is our man. He bought the stock. Mark Andrews? That's right. You've heard the old saying, every cloud has a silver lining. Well, Mark Andrews has just become our silver lining. What are you talking about? A fool and his money are soon parted. Bye, Art. Is this a school assignment? Well, sure, you could say that. No, 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 no. Sit down, sit down. Okay, it's much better. Now, hello everyone, and welcome to Which Curtain Is Yours? And now, please welcome the star of the show, the handsome, the popular, the incredibly brilliant Mark Andrews! Thank you, thank you. Which Curtain Is Yours? The show which gives me the pleasure of making all your dreams come true. And now, Sam, who's our first contestant? Thank you, Mark. Today we have with us just a lovely young lady, Katie Andrews. Katie Andrews, step right over here with me. Okay, Katie, you see this curtain? You mean that sheet? I have a question for you. If you answer it correctly, you will win what's behind that curtain. Who hides a quarter under your pillow when you lose a tooth? The tooth fairy. That's right. There's more! Mark, what now, in the now, world is going on? You'll get on. your turn, you'll get your turn. All right, Sam, who'll be our next contestant? Ladies and gentlemen, from Biscayne Beach, Ali and Ali! Okay, Ali, for curtain number two, here's the question. For the last four weeks, a new rock group, Flea Bidden Plague, has had a song on the charts which is making a strong bid to become number one. What is that song? This is so dumb. That's right! <laughs> Okay, now, all the way from Fresno, California, yeah, Helen Andrews! Yeah. Helen, come on down! Yeah. Andrews, welcome! Yeah. Oh, thank you, I think! What? Your show all the time! Okay, let's not overdo okay. it. All right. Now, behind this curtain is something you've dreamed of having for a long, long time. Here's the question. What president, to avoid assassination, was actually slipped into the Capitol under the cloak of secrecy? Abraham Lincoln? That's right! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! Oh. Mark, I think it's time oh. we all have an And now for our final yeah. contestant from right here in Cleveland, Ohio, let's give a big welcome to Mr. George Andrews! Yeah. Yeah. Very serious. Well, that's good, George Andrews, because a lot is riding Will on you this. you shut so that thing off? Now, would you please give me an explanation on why you're doing all this? Is this some type of school assignment? Because if it is, I've got a few it's choices. It's a school assignment. Well, what then? Who's this for? How did you buy all this stuff? Have you been in your college money market account? No, my college money's still there. Well, how then? He made a fortune on the stock market. Would you mind if I talk to Mark by myself for a minute? Mark, go ahead. What's wrong? Holly, what's wrong? Well, I gotta tell you, I never expected to find all this when I got here. 
Does this mean you've sold the stock? No, just some of it. Why'd you buy my dad's stock? Because <laughs> I got, thought you'd get a kick out of it. But can you believe it? Look what happened. I mean, how lucky can you get? I talked to Mr. Spillman. He said this morning all you wanted was your money back. Well, I know, but... But that was before I, I found out I'd earned all this money. I think lucky losing. was the word you used. Mark, you didn't actually mean to make a stock purchase. This all happened because you used the wrong computer at school. You don't have this money because you earned it. Okay, fine, you're right. But the way I see it, as long as the mistake has been made, I might as well make the most out of and it. And what about my dad's company? What about it? He needs the money that stock would have raised. Have you talked to him? Yes. What did he say? He said, well, that's the breaks. He got lucky and that's all there is well, to it. Well, then what's your problem? He's making it sound like everything's fine and I don't think it's that simple. Why? Because something isn't right about all this. I mean, look how it happened. Doesn't it seem funny to you at all? Why the early press conference to announce the computer chip? Why was the suspension lifted just like that? And why were all those people in the office the other day? I mean, all this happened after you made an accidental stock purchase. Well, if, if you think what I did was illegal, you're wrong. Oh, and I mean absolutely wrong. I already I know that. You didn't do anything illegal. But you want me to give the stock back, don't you? What I want you to do is think about what happened. Maybe go talk to Dad. You already talked to your dad. I know. I know that, and I think you should. Why should I? Because something about this doesn't feel right to me, and I don't think it should feel right to you either. Oh, you want to know how this feels to me? Do you want to know how this feels? Well, it feels great! All right, so I got lucky. I got lucky the way nobody gets lucky. I made a fortune on the stock market. Holly, you talked to your dad. He said what's happened has happened. If he didn't want it to happen, he shouldn't have put the stock up for sale in the first place. Oh, so that's that. That's it? You make a big bang on the stock market, and you can buy everything you want, so now life is... Well, you want to know. Tell me about it. How is it? Whose car do we go out on dates in? Who never has to bat an eye when they need something new to wear? Who has to think about saving every rotten, miserable penny so they can go to college? You? Huh? Holly, it's been me! But not anymore. The world's just made a big change for Mark Andrews. The wildest dream I've ever had in my life has just come true. And now you want me to give it all back. Well, why should I? What I want you to do is think about it. I have thought about it. Mark, there's a telephone call for you. Hello? Yeah, this is Mark. Oh, hi. Thanks, it's amazing. I still can't believe it. Um, well, no, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I guess I haven't had... I haven't really had a chance to think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, sure. It never hurts to talk. Uh-huh. Okay, well, thanks for calling. Uh-huh, bye-bye. That was, uh, that was Justin Maddox. He wants to get together and talk about some investment ideas. Maybe even tonight. News travels fast. Holly! Holly! Excuse me, I forgot! You know what you want and you always get it! Sorry to disappoint you! So, what are we gonna do about all this? I don't know yet.
Ladies, America's newest millionaire. Come on over here and take a look at your new car in action. How you doing, Mark? Oh, fine, thanks. Oh, Mark, this is Sheila Ashton. She's an investment banker in the city. We decided to deformalize the meeting a bit. You want to borrow a suit? Oh, no, that, that's OK. Have a seat. How does it feel to be a millionaire? Well, I'm not so sure yet. I think I could get used to it. Yeah, I know what you mean. There's only one problem. You see, you're not a millionaire. What do you mean? Well, first of all, you take the 25000 you invested, and you pay 225000 to cover the margin. And you take your brokerage fees on buying and selling, probably 25000 Then there's my favorite. I'm sure your dad won't let you forget Uncle Sam. I figure federal, state, and local taxes will run you about half a million. After buying the car and the presents, I figure you'll make less than $100,000. That's why I brought you here. I think you and I need to do a little brainstorming. What's up, friend? Oh, nothing. I was just... just stopping by. Well, gotta go. Um... Always wait to get that swing set. I mean, if if it would help. Well, for now, you just play with it as if you're gonna keep it, because I know you take good care of things, okay? Okay. Thanks for the worry. Yesterday. You weren't at school either. Yeah, I am. I didn't go. Things to do? Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of thinking. Be careful, Mark. Holly, I wish. If... Mark, I still don't feel right about all this. But I still love you hasn't changed. But Mark, Justin Maddox is a snake. Give yourself some time to think, and if you're going to keep the stock, just don't jump into any deals right away. And especially not with Justin. Smart move is in all this anyway, huh? I'd like to have one good reason why we should just keep going. Because I said so. Oh, I like that. What else should we do just because you say so? You know what I think we should do? I think we should just sit back nice and easy and wait for the next opportunity to come along. Who's gonna spot that when it happens? You? Understand something. This is it. Tomorrow is full court press time. Justin, honestly, think about it. It's your tax bill. It isn't just a stupid tax bill. Okay. Look. Let's just say if the only people who wanted my money were the IRS, this would all be a cakewalk. 
Waiting for the next opportunity is not an option for me, so I don't want to hear it anymore. Fine. Thank you. All right, then. Can I at least drop this ridiculous exercise of trying to dig up dirt on Mark Andrews? I feel like I'm running around the Maypole. It's stupid, all right. Justin. All right, all right, that's fine. Doesn't matter. When Andrews gets the idea of how much money he can make, or how much money he thinks he's going to make, I should say, it'll be like pulling a trout on shore with a crane. How's your sandwich? It's Maddox. Find Williams for me. You all set? Yeah, I'm set. I've talked to Andrews. He's gonna swallow it. I'm glad you're so sure. Don't be late. I'll be there. Listen, Katie's outside. Um, is it okay if she just stays here? She has her skates and everything. I was gonna watch her, but something came up. I won't be gone very long. Sure, no problem. Okay, thanks. to show you. Why? I think I have a pretty good idea of how much flack you're taking for making money on the bank stock. How? Just putting two and two together. Maybe I should save one and one. You and Holly. All right? That's what I thought. Well, so how's your deal gonna help? It's so simple you won't believe it. You see, I own some property down here. Some old warehouses, things like that. Anyway, with Banks' new technological breakthrough, he's gonna need some room to expand, he's gonna need it in a hurry, and he's gotta be able to afford it. So what does that have to do with me? Just see in a minute. I'll show you around. What do you think? Why would Mr. Banks want this? Because I've seen the report for Banks' expansion. And I know how much it's going to cost. But best of all, I've seen in beautiful black and white they have plans to buy this very same building. Why don't you take a guess who they're going to buy it from? You. No. No, they're going to buy it from you. Me? This is where you come into the picture. You buy this property from me by way of a simple trade. 
You give me the 100,000 shares of bank stock that's become such a pain in your life, and I'll give you this property, which Banks already plans on buying for $3 million. Now, I can just taste how good that is, can't you? Well, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem right to me. Why not? I'd be making a big profit at Mr. Banks' expense. I'd say you're already pretty good at that, wouldn't you? Did you bring the certificate? It's in your car. Then let's make a deal. Let's see if Mr. Banks would come out and talk with us first. Don't need to. I've already talked to him. Remember, didn't I just tell you that a minute ago? Well, I know, but I mean, I think I need to hear that from him. I mean, that's what you would do if you were me, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. But I'm not you, and I'm running out of time. Williams! Barbara! Okay. So we didn't like that deal. I'm gonna give you another deal. I don't think you'll like it any better, but I know you'll take it anyway. How would you like to go to jail for insider trading? What? No. You see, you're allowed yes or no answers here. Yes or no. No! That would have been my answer. All right, when Mark left with the authorization last Friday, was the packet sealed? Absolutely. Well, when you handed it to me, it was open. No, that's a lie. I sealed it myself. You saw it too, didn't you, Barb? Mm-hmm. It was open. They're on my side. Are you getting the picture? Huh? I think a jury would find a very interesting coincidence between an open packet with a stock authorization inside delivered by you and that same stock bought by you the very next Monday. Well, I don't care what you say. I didn't do anything wrong. And I'm not going to take your deal. Have it your way. In fact, this is what Art said you'd do. You see, I have experience on my side. I've been through all this before. Trans tax, bad corporation. I could go on and on with the deals I've made, and I've never gotten caught. You know why? Because people always do it my way, just like you're going to. So don't be too big of a sap to know when you've been licked. Okay, kid? I just told I'll have to admit, it wasn't easy digging up dirt on you. In fact, we couldn't find any. But I did a good job of creating something, you think? I'll tell you what I think. You can go take a flying leap, because I'm not- You let me tell you something. I've arranged for Holly to be picked up in 10 minutes from her work. She's going to be taken somewhere and kept there until you make the deal. Just- Shut up! Holly won't just go somewhere with a stranger. She's not going to have a choice. Let's see what that is. Yeah, it's me. Hang on a second. We're going to have ourselves a little signing over party. So what's the word, Justin? Justin? Mark!
Come on, I need to talk to Holly. Is she there? Well, can you see her out anywhere? Well, go on the parking lot and see if she's there. Remember me? You don't need this. Are we okay? Yeah, we've got him in custody. Did we get everything we needed? Yeah, we got it. We're taking the microphone off Williams right now. It's okay, Mark. It's all over. Come on. Justin Maddox would structure these deals in such a way that all parties involved kept a tight lid because they could be blackmailed. So we could never prove anything. So you came to Dad? Actually, the idea came from Mark's father. So I blew it when I bought the stock. That's an understatement. Not only couldn't we catch Justin, but because your stock purchase was legal, we couldn't give Mr. Banks his stock back. So then how were you still able to get him? We almost had him when he grabbed that phone and ran. Justin cooked his own goose. He was so desperate for the money that he told Art he thought he could trick you into losing the stock on some sham deal. Our plan would only work if you didn't fall for Justin's deal. Your father, Art, and Mr. Banks convinced me that you wouldn't. I take it you were hoping to hear me say he'd have to give the stock back while we were in there. Actually, um, I was hoping to hear him say he would. Well, for your father's sake, I wish he would too. We promised him he'd get it back. It was only on the market to catch Justin. But Mark made a legal purchase. It's now his to keep. Anyway, don't be too hard on Mark. Oh, my goodness. 
Now youth has gone and there's a shadow on me Living on yesterdays for a while Was it so long ago I used to see Hi, I'm Mark Andrews. I'm a runner for Banks Electronics. Yeah, I think I know you. I have a delivery for your father. That belongs to him. But I prefer simplicity 